it's finally time again. What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're covering my ultimate settings guide for Rocket League in 2022. I know what you're thinking, Luke, haven't you made settings guides before? Yes, I have, but recently I've gone through and changed a few important settings and I've never really gone through all of my settings together rapid fire in one place. So today we're breaking down each type of important setting in Rocket League as fast as possible. Very fast. So even if you're a veteran player, I'm sure there's gonna be something in this video for everyone watching. But if you're new here, what's up? My name's Luke and I run Rocket League's number one live coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. A lot of people don't know, this is a program that I run every six weeks to help people like you get Grand Champ. And the price is actually set to increase in just 14 days. So if you wanna learn how almost a thousand players have fast-tracked their progress, hit me up on Discord with the keywords GC. Even if you just want to learn more, I'll talk with you directly about what my coaching looks like. Link is in the description below. Otherwise, let's get started. So to kick it off, let's talk camera settings. First two settings on the list are kind of non-issues. Camera preset, this is one that you'll only see if you have Bacchus mod, and it actually allows you to instantly port in pro camera settings. It's kind of cool, but since you're watching this, I don't recommend you use it. Just listen to what I'm gonna tell you in a sec. Number two, camera shake, just turn it off, turn it off. Three, field of view or FOV. Now we're talking about real camera settings. Basically, jury is in on this one. You wanna use max field of view. Some pros have started popularizing 109 field of view. I think it's kind of a gimmick, just put it on 110. Camera distance. Meta range for camera distance is between 260 and 280, but I set mine at 270. You'll start to notice a trend here, but keep watching and you'll see what I mean. Height. Meta range for height is anywhere between 90 and 110 so I set mine on 100 angle meta range is between negative 3 and negative 5 I do negative 4 stiffness this one is kind of variable some X pros like Lethemir I think have this all the way up on one basically what it controls is how locked in the camera will stay as your car accelerates. And personally, I don't know if there's a benefit to more stiff or less stiff. So I just go in the middle, 0.5. Swivel speed, this is how quickly your camera will pitch around the field. I recommend setting this one high. Anywhere between five and 10 is great if you can control it. And then finally, transition speed. This is how quickly you toggle between ball cam and car cam. Some people love this setting high, so it's like an insta switch. I think it's a little disorienting, so I recommend staying low in the range. Anywhere between 1 even and 1.4, that's where I'd stay. And then invert swivel, this is sort of like whether or not down means down or down means up when you move your camera. Intuitively, invert swivel makes more sense, so I, I just recommend you turn it on. All right, that's camera settings. Oh, and one last note before I go on with the settings, you can access a library of pro settings on a website called Liquipedia. I'll have it linked in the description below. However, I wouldn't just go copy pro settings because I'm going to explain what these actually do in practice. Practice. But yeah, if you want to check it out while I give my voiceover, by all means. Jumping into section two, control settings. Now we're going to cover keybinds as a part of this in a second, but first I actually want to cover sensitivity settings. Now, just like in a shooter where sensitivity is really important, sensitivity is actually incredibly important in Rocket League 2. For some reason, a lot of people don't talk about sensitivity, so I'm actually going to go a little bit into the weeds, but I promise it's worth it, so please hear me out. Steering versus aerial sensitivity. Basically, what I've found is that accurate Accuracy is more important than quickness, roughly speaking, on the ground. So what I recommend to players that I coach, especially if you're not at the super high ranks, maybe you're just at the intermediate ranks, diamond champ sort of thing, I recommend having a lower steering sense than your aerial sense. I think a great range to start out is anywhere between the 1.2 and the 1.4 range for both. So a good starter bind could be 1.2 steering, 1.4 aerial. That being said, you might be looking at my screen saying, Luke, 
wait, your steering and aerial sense is 1.9. What's going on? Here's why I have it that way. My recommendation is as you get better at the game to slowly work both of these sensitivities upwards. Specifically, as you get better aerial control, as you get better ground control, and you start to be more consistent, that's when you increase your sensitivity. If, however, you're noticing that, you know, your movement is jittery or you're missing just like consistent, like basic shots, that's when you would dial down. So basically start low, work up as you get better and try to keep your steering below your aerial. However, here's where the recent change comes in. If you know me, I used to play on 1.8. Now I'm playing on 1.9. Why is that? Well, one, it's because I've gotten better, sure. But the actual reason was because I saw a flow state video talking about fine motor movement acquisition in games. Now, without getting into the technical too much, basically they rigged this study and they found that oscillating the sensitivity unknowingly, for example, telling somebody, hey, you're going to train for this game, but secretly they went in and they tinkered their sensitivity. They found that the people who they oscillated their sensitivities back and forth between training sessions learned faster than the people who had the same sense every time. Strange, right? So basically I'm testing it out for myself to see if it works, but it would make sense that changing the sensitivity causes your brain to actually have to pay attention at what you're doing more. I don't know, it might be fugazi, fugazi whatever. That's steering and aerial sensitivity probably in more depth than it needs to be. Hopefully I didn't bore you too much. Okay, let's talk about something that is also really important that I can go quicker on dead zone. Here's the thing about controller dead zone. Controller dead zone is like sensitivity on steroids. And what I mean by that is like, if you change your dead zone by 0.05, you will notice five times the difference in your actual controller movement as if you just change the sensitivity by 0.05 or even like 0.20. Basically what controller controller dead zone does is it controls how far you actually need to move the joystick from center to register a movement. And once again, in an ideal world, you want it to be instantly responsive, but in a game like Rocket League where you're constantly moving, that can get a little uncontrollable. So meta range for dead zone is between 0.05 and 0.10, but I really recommend you work it down if possible. Mine's at 0.04 right now and I love it. Dodge dead zone, this controls how far you need to move the joystick to initiate a dodge. Now, a lot of people have trouble with this while fast aerialing. And so I think the most common ranges on Liquipedia are like 0.4 to 0.8. And apparently the higher you go, the more you'll protect against accidentally backflipping when you fast aerial. That being said, I think that's mostly a mechanical input issue. I would try to go lower on this. I use 0.55 anywhere, you know, around that number, you're going to be just fine. You probably won't notice this setting. And the last few settings here, controller vibration, just please turn it off. Ball camera mode, please turn it on toggle and keyboard inputs. I used to be KBM for my first 500 hours. Fun fact, if you didn't know that about me, but, uh, I, I have no, I have no clue how KBM works. So, uh, go to my discord and ask somebody who's KBM. See, got you there. Shameless plug. Okay, wrapping up with control settings, now moving into probably the most important topic in this video, keybinds. Warning, before we get into keybinds, if you know me, you also know my keybinds are totally unconventional. The difference between my keybinds and the average player's keybinds is I don't have a drive button. Yes, you heard me right. I don't have a drive button. I play the game like XG2 player Rizzo in that my drive button is my left joystick. If I push it forward, I drive forward. If I push it back, I drive back. And my steering is also controlled by my joystick. A lot of people ask if this is a liability in ranked. I mean, the the fact that Rizzo went pro using these settings, hopefully that means it's not. <laughs> but also from my experience, it's not. It's just a different learning curve. Would I recommend this on you? Probably not. The benefit is you free up a lot of keybinds when drive and reverse are both controlled by this button right here. But would I recommend it? No, just use the normal drive and reverse. So that being said, I'm going to show you my keybinds, but more important than the ones I'm showing you is sort of the mentality and the rules you have to follow when creating keybinds. The thing about keybinds is a lot of keybinds can work, but some are harder to learn than others. 
Does that make sense? So basically you can use whatever keybinds you want, but when it comes to hitting certain higher level mechanics, having poor keybinds or difficult to use keybinds where, you know, you can't press like two critical inputs at the same time, that can actually become a major headache for you to relearn. I've seen people get like 800 hours into the game and have to change their keybinds. I don't want for that to be you. So listen up to these rules. So my keybinds, you'll see my drive forward and my drive backwards are both controlled by my left stick. Same thing with my steer right. Here's what I recommend recommend you do though, if you can. A lot of players have an issue with putting jump and boost near each other on their keyboard. Basically, if you don't know, as you get to the higher levels, boost is something you're going to want to be able to press at all times, no matter what mechanic you're doing. So if you can bind boost to the back of your controller, what this will enable you to do is it'll free up these buttons here and it'll allow you to use your thumb to control your air roll input, your jump input, while boost is controlled by hopefully your pointer fingers or your middle fingers in the back of the controller here. That being said, I want to say like 40%, 50% of pros still have learned to sort of fat finger these buttons where they'll have like jump and boost, you know, on X and square. And then they kind of lay their thumb over the buttons. Some people have learned how to do it this way. I don't recommend it. It's not ideal. Like you can very easily accidentally press them at the same time and backflip. If you can learn how to do it, great. I recommend just, just put boost on the back. It's easier. Next, moving into power slide and air roll. Once again, because I I don't have drive key binds all these binds are free in the back which is awesome and i just put power slide and air roll both on r1 if you don't know you want to put joystick air roll and power slide on the same button reason being is because power slide only happens on the ground air roll only happens in the air why not save the key binds and, and put them on the same thing it's also just convenient for recoveries which is something you'll learn as you play more but yeah power slide air roll same button ball cam if you've been following my instructions you should have one of these key binds free so you can put it on triangle you can put it on circle doesn't really matter or if you're on xbox Y or B, and that's the only conversion I'm going to do because that took a minute. Apologies, Xbox players. Okay, then rear view. Rear view is something I actually like never use. You can put that on right stick. That's fine. I use camera pitch more, which is my right stick. We'll keep going. Air steer. Yeah, put it on your left joystick. And here, here are the big questions. Air roll left versus air roll right. I talk about this in my 100 mistakes video, I believe. For 99.9999% of players, I'm just going to recommend you learn one directional air roll. Reason being is because the time investment versus the return for learning that second directional air roll is like negligible for the hundreds of thousands of hours of training the muscle memory. Learn one air roll, you'll be fine. You really only need to bind one of these, then just use joystick air roll for the other direction and you're gonna be perfectly fine. So what does that look like for me? You'll basically only see me using air roll left. Air roll left is my square button and I like that because I can jump and fat finger onto air roll left pretty easily. Camera swivel, you're gonna wanna put this on your right joystick. I think everybody does that. And we did it, that's control settings. Next section. Super quick, we've got interface. I want to talk about interface because the only thing that matters most here is nameplate scale. Nameplate scale is how big the name tags of other players in your lobby will appear. And there's no reason to not have this on 200%. That way you can spot out enemies quicker from afar. The rest of this stuff doesn't matter unless you're colorblind, you can turn on colorblind mode. But let's jump into video and then we'll finish off with one bonus section. Okay, video settings. These are the settings that control how your game appears, but more importantly, how quickly it will run. In a game like Rocket League, performance is everything. Reaction time, input delay, these things will all add up and they can actually mean the difference between conceding or scoring in game. Resolution, this is actually one of the easiest ways to increase your performance in game. I recommend putting resolution as the res of your monitor. So for most people, it's gonna be 1920 by 1080. But if you're having performance issues, go into your resolution it will make the game look significantly worse, I will say. But find a similar aspect ratio. So you'll see here, you can swap it to 1600 by 900, or you could swap it to 1280 by 720 even. You will notice a massive performance jump if you're on a low-end PC by just changing your res. It looks ugly, but it works. Second, display mode. Always, 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 always play full screen. If you don't play full screen, you will be introducing, for me at least, a noticeable amount of input lag. Don't play on anything
anything less than full screen. And then V-Sync, turn V-Sync off. Some like cinematic, like exploration games, it'll make it look crisp. In Rocket League, it just adds input lag. All my homies hate input lag. Terrible joke. Um, we hate input lag, so turn it off. And finally, here's where it gets interesting in the basic settings. Render quality, this is what I want you to forfeit last if you need to increase your performance. Render quality will be how precise everything looks in game, how like sharp the pixels look. And if you turn this down, once again, big performance jump, but the game will look noticeably worse and noticeably more blurry, which is for the same reason I don't recommend you lower your resolution. I recommend you don't lower render quality because when the ball's like way out in the distance and then it starts blurring into the background and you like don't know where stuff is going, that's when you know you need to upgrade the PC. Render detail, my render detail says custom, but the reason it says custom is because everything is on low on the right side, except for transparent goalposts. So we'll go into that in a second and then frames per second. So this is a common debate slash question, and I'm just going to do my best to explain it here. Yes, your monitor can only output a certain amount of frames per second. So my monitor, for example, is 240 FPS. Weird flex, I know, but actually upgrade to 240 FPS. Your world will be completely changed. <laughs> but the way FPS works, yes, your monitor can only output a certain amount of frames, but the input lag you play with can still be lowered by increasing the frame rate of your game. Let me give you an example. Let's say you got a beast PC, you're playing on 500 FPS and your monitor can only output even 144. Your input lag that you play with will be lower even though you can only see 144 frames. So what does this mean in practice? You're going to see decreasing returns to the lowering of input lag as your FPS scales up. For example, I have my 240 hertz monitor. I don't cap my frames at 240. I cap them at 360. Having them at 360 gives me, I think it's one millisecond less of input lag. But long story short, for most people, I would just put your max frames per second on 360 or 240. If you have like a little bit of a lower NPC, you're going to see a little bit less input lag, even if your monitor can't output it perfectly. All right. And last but not least, advanced settings. Now, these are the type of settings that are going to make your game look better but probably also make you play worse so if you're a comp sweat like me who's just trying to climb turn all this stuff off texture detail performance world detail performance performance low intensity everything toggled off except for transparent goalposts transparent goalposts are going to allow you to see up and out of your net even when you're sitting under it this is obviously good if you're defending so turn transparent goalposts on that'll cover you for video settings and last but not least, quick chat settings. Change your quick chats. Really, the only ones I recommend you change. You'll see I have on your left binded here and I have on your right binded. I think it's useful to just bind one of these rows that you don't use to kick off quick chats. So I have like on your left, on your right, defending, need boost, I think it's called. Bind those. They're useful, especially in rank 2v2 to tell your teammate, you know, you're going back left, you're going back right. It's not game changing, but you can adjust your quick chats. And for whatever reason, Zionix doesn't default bind kickoff off quick chats which like why wouldn't you okay all right with that said that is everything you need to know about settings in rocket league i tried my best to not explain too much but give you enough information to also know what you're doing with your settings but okay if you have any questions as always ask in my private discord we've got almost 20k members it's insane tons of people will help you in there and i'll have links to anything i talked about in this video including my socials like my discord and my other stuff now um all linked down below hopefully that was helpful if i was wrong correct me in the comments down below but that's all i've got for this one so as always, thank you all so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace, guys.